viewers, and welcome to Rift Valley 2, RVTV, your gateway to unbiased insights into the intricate tapestry of African affairs. Your host is Suleiman Ali, and I'm delighted to have you join us on this enlightening journey through three compelling stories that shed light on our continent's dynamic landscapes. At RVTV, we're dedicated to unraveling the truth behind the headlines, empowering you with knowledge about Africa's evolving narratives. If you share our passion for understanding the world around us, I encourage you to subscribe to Rift Valley Tube and share our content with fellow seekers of truth. Now, let's delve into the heart of our first story. In our first story, we delve into the concerning situation unfolding in Ethiopia's Amhara region. Diplomats from various nations have converged in Addis Ababa to gain insight into the ongoing unrest. However, what transpired during this critical meeting has sparked skepticism looms as Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Mr. McConnell, briefs them amid rising tensions. Let's uncover details together. Diplomats from various nations convened in Addis Ababa as Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Mr. Mekinen, briefed them on the ongoing unrest in the Amhara region. The meeting aimed to provide insight into the situation, although skepticism arose due to Mr. Mekinen's unverified claim about the government's engagement with FANO fighters for a peaceful resolution while withholding crucial details. In recent times, the Amhara region has been gripped by intensified violence and chaos, prompting not only domestic concern, but also reverberating alarm throughout the global community. The declaration of government involvement with FANO, a faction intricately woven into the region's dynamics, has cast a pall of uncertainty over the authenticity of the government's motives. Nonetheless, the diplomats' apprehension deepened as Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announced a state of emergency, a move accompanied by an abrupt communication blackout that severed digital ties with the entire Amhara region. The imposition of this state of emergency and the ensuing communication silence amplified global unease, fostering rising apprehensions regarding transparency and the safeguarding of human rights. Ethiopian authorities swiftly reacted with the unveiling of emergency measures, endowing them with heightened powers, including warrantless arrests, search operations, and curfew enforcement. Echoes of the past, notably the previously declared state of emergency during the Tigray conflict, which led to the mass detention of ethnic Tigrayanese S, reverberated, sowing profound concerns about the unfolding developments. Presently, Reports spotlight an onslaught of arrests, primarily targeting individuals of ethnic Amhara origin, as affirmed by statements from the Rights Commission. Legal experts have raised concerns over the implementation of emergency measures within Addis Ababa, resulting in suspects being confined to improvised detention facilities located in schools, police stations, and similar venues. These actions have triggered alarms over the potential erosion of civil liberties and human rights, prompting select sources to voice their concerns anonymously, out of fear of repercussions. Amidst these disquieting narratives, reports have emerged detailing the deployment of heavy weaponry by the Ethiopian military, encompassing airstrikes and drone assaults, aimed at unarmed civilians engaged in peaceful protests within the Amhara region. These drastic measures yielded heart-rending civilian casualties, consequently eliciting universal condemnation and outrage. The brutality inflicted upon nonviolent demonstrators stands as a stark indictment of the gravity of the situation and its far, reaching implications. Speaking on condition of anonymity, a diplomat shared insights into the complex challenges faced by the Abbey administration emphasizing a precarious equilibrium. They underscored the Amhara community's steadfast support extended to Prime Minister Abiy during his ascension to power. Additionally, the diplomat highlighted the shifting dynamics following the TPLF's attack on the Ethiopian National Defense Force aimed at destabilizing the government. During this tumult, Fano emerged as a significant source of political and military reinforcement. Standing by Abiy's government, 
However, the Amhara community now finds itself disillusioned, perceiving a sense of betrayal from the Prime Minister. Ethiopia's recent emergence from prior conflicts has heightened the stakes entwined with its current engagement with famine. The nation's history of internal strife, compounded by current tensions, poses formidable obstacles to the pursuit of enduring stability and a viable political solution. As the international community remains vigilant, concerns transcend the borders of the Amhara region, resonating with the broader implications of the government's actions. The severe repercussions stemming from the declared state of emergency on democratic principles and human rights are of paramount concern, underscoring the urgent need for a measured and rights, conscious response that safeguards the dignity and freedoms of all citizens. As we conclude our coverage of this deeply concerning situation, we must reflect on the far-reaching implications of the events unfolding in the Amhara region. The challenges facing Ethiopia and its engagement with various factions, like FANO, reveal the complexity of maintaining peace and stability. As we move forward, our next story takes us to Sudan, where a new alliance has emerged, reshaping the dynamics of the ongoing conflict. Let's explore this development together. On August 17, 2023, in Khartoum, the Third Front, known as Tamazuji, formally announced its alliance with the Rapid Support Forces in its ongoing campaign against the Sudanese army. Tamazuji, one of the armed factions that signed the Juba Peace Agreement in 2020, has long been secluded and unpopular due to suspicions that it might have been influenced by military intelligence. A statement signed by Tamazuji's leader, Muhammad Ali Krishi, declared, the Tamazuji movement officially joins forces with the Rapid Support Forces to confront the remnants of the former regime. These elements manipulated the armed forces to gain power and reinstate an oppressive totalitarian regime. Kweshi ordered all forces affiliated with the movement, spanning across the Darfur and Kordofan border regions, to immediately converge at RCEF camps and posts. Despite previous successes, the RCEF is currently under attack from the Sudanese army in Khartoum state, which has been abandoned by its residents. The group has also been tarnished by incidents of looting, war crimes, and human rights abuses committed by its personnel. Addressing regional and international efforts to resolve the conflict, Kreshi criticized the unrealistic conditions set by the armed forces for negotiations with paramilitary groups. He argued that this indicated their ongoing ties to the former regime. Before the conflict escalated, Mohammed Hamdan Daglo, commander of the RCEF, had accused Tamazuj of orchestrating tribal conflicts in El Janina City in 2022. He had also reported the arrest and detention of several members of the group. However, shortly after hostilities began between the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Forces on April 15, Several Tamazuj movement leaders, including Ahmed Kaja, the commander of Tamazuj forces in Darfur, switched sides to join the Ars Four, switched sides to join the Ras. Comprising Arab factions from Darfur and Kordofan, the movement had previously fought against the Splam as part of local militias nurtured by the army to counter rebel groups. After the Juba Peace Agreement, Tamazuj's leadership persisted in demanding treatment equal to leaders of other signatory movements. They expressed dissatisfaction over the lack of privileges or government positions granted to them and frequently threatened to rebel against the government. Notably, the Third Front had also been rejected by the signatory movements of the Juba peace deal. From Sudan, we shift our focus to the United Arab Emirates and their response to allegations concerning the Sudan conflict. Join us in unraveling this story. The United Arab Emirates has firmly refuted recent reports that suggest its backing of the paramilitary rapid support forces, a group embroiled in conflict with the Sudanese army since mid-April 2023. On August 10, 
The Wall Street Journal accused the United Arab Emirate of providing weaponry and ammunition to the Rapid Support Forces, exacerbating the ongoing Sudan conflict that has tragically resulted in the loss of nearly 4,000 civilian lives and the displacement of around 4 million individuals. Responding to these allegations, Afra Al Hamili, the Director of Strategic Communications at the UAKations, at the UAT Foreign Ministry emphatically dismissed the claims presented in the article. In a statement published by the official Emirates news agency, Al Hamili stated, the UAG vehemently denies supplying weapons or ammunition to any of the conflicting factions in Sudan since the commencement of the conflict in April 2023. Al Hamili further emphasized that the Emirate maintains a neutral stance in the ongoing Sudan conflict advocating for the cessation of hostilities and the full preservation of Sudan's sovereignty. While Sudanese military leaders have alluded to potential regional involvement and support for the ARCEF, they have refrained from explicitly mentioning the United Arab Emirate by name. With the landscape of African affairs and the United Arab Emirates' strategic engagement in mind, we now pivot to an intricate tapestry of regional dynamics in our next story. From diplomatic dialogues and economic endeavors, we venture into a realm of conflict and collaboration, expanding interests in Africa, a strategic approach amid regional dynamics. This morning, a significant event unfolded in Addis Ababa as President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan of the United Arab Emirates arrived to engage in talks with Prime Minister Abi Ahmed. The discussions are set to encompass diverse areas of bilateral relations, regional dynamics, and global issues of mutual concern. This visit underscores the UAD's deepening interests in Africa, which are influenced by both economic imperatives and the geopolitical landscape of the Horn of Africa. Particularly notable is the UAE's growing engagement in light of its relationships with Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey in the region. Economic Ventures and Trade One of the core aspects driving the United Arab Emirates' expanding interests in Africa is its eagerness to diversify its economy. The African continent presents a multitude of untapped markets, resources, and investment opportunities that align with the UAE strategy to move beyond its traditional oil-dependent economy. Through bilateral trade agreements and investment partnerships, the United Arab Emirates aims to establish itself as a key player in African economic development. Saudi Arabia's influence and shared interests. The UAE's interests in Africa are closely linked to its relationship with Saudi Arabia, its regional ally, both nations share common objectives in terms of economic diversification and stability. Collaborative efforts in Africa allow them to leverage their combined strengths and resources for mutual benefit. This shared vision also extends to countering potential security threats and extremism in the region. Navigating the Iran factor. In the Horn of Africa, Iran's increasing presence and influence have not gone unnoticed. The United Arab Emirates, while aiming to foster regional stability, carefully navigates its interests in relation to Iran. As the Emirate strengthens its economic ties in the region, it seeks to maintain a balance that safeguards its strategic goals while avoiding any escalation in the complex web of regional rivalries. Balancing Turkey's involvement. Turkey's growing influence in Africa, particularly in countries such as Somalia, presents another factor shaping the United Arab Emirates' interests. The United Arab Emirates' approach involves striking a balance between its own engagements and Turkey's endeavors in the region. Both countries recognize the importance of Africa for their strategic objectives, often resulting in competition and cooperation depending on the context. President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan's visit to Ethiopia underscores the UAE's multifaceted interests in Africa, encompassing economic diversification, regional stability, and geopolitical influence. As the Emirate carefully navigates its growing ties with Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey in the Horn of Africa, 
It reflects the intricate web of international relations shaping the continent's future. The Emirates' strategic approach highlights its commitment to forging partnerships that enhance not only its own economic prospects, but also contribute to the stability and progress of the African nations it engages with. And there you have it, an exploration of four significant stories that shed light on Africa's complex tapestry of events. At Arva TV, we're committed to providing you with accurate and unbiased information that empowers you to form your own opinions. If you found these insights valuable, please consider subscribing to Rift Valley Tube and sharing our content with your community. Remember, knowledge is the key to understanding, and together, we can uncover the truth behind the headlines. Stay informed, stay aware. I am Suleiman Ali, signing off from Rift Valley Tube. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey, and don't forget subscribing.